Let's talk about the, you said something about salary. You want to talk about salary? Yeah, we can talk a little bit about salary here. Yeah. So, I mean, salary, I think, is one of these things that a lot of students look at coming in. And I think it's smart to look at it, but I also think it's vastly misleading. So both from a program ranking side, because salary is used all the time, and then also as graduates, right, you're looking at programs thinking, hey, if I invest $100,000 in tuition, I can come out making 120, like things will even out, I'll be good to go. But I think one of the big issues with salary is, A, if you're a student and you're coming into the program and you're going to maximize your money, don't go into quantitative finance. You can easily get an MBA and go get a job doing investment banking or doing traditional trading. And like students will point out in my comments sometimes like, hey, you can make more money being like a petroleum engineer. It's like, sure, you could, right? But the salary doesn't really indicate the quality of the job or the type of the job. Because again, you can make more money doing other jobs or other tasks. You could also make less money. So salary is tough. And then on the rankings, I think it's a pretty bad indicator because... What ends up happening with a lot of the business hybrid fake programs is a student comes in and they've got five, six years of experience in investment banking or in the banking sector, and then they go and get a two-year's master's and they come out and they're making like 180. So now you're like, wow, this program is amazing. They're making 180,000 coming out and they're excited. But what you don't realize is that person has all this experience that you didn't have, where a lot of the more traditional financial engineering programs, you're going from undergrad straight into this master's. It's when you come out, you should be expecting 80 to 100, 70 to 100, something in that range. But there's a lot of these outliers are being included into the data. And I don't think schools are doing a good job at divvying these out and saying, hey, uh, straight undergrads are making an average of, say, like 80, 85, 90. And then, you know, the ones that had work experience in the past, they're coming out making 110, 120. So I think the salary is kind of a way to kind of fudge your rankings as well. And again, going back to what you said, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I remember when I started the program, there was all these rumors of other programs that had lied and cheated and put out fake stats to make the program better so you get more applicants into the, the system and the school's making more money. But at the same time, now it encourages you know, other programs to keep up with that, that tick mark of you got to, if they're fudging their numbers, we got to fudge our numbers. You know, you try, start trying to justify this in your head. Like it's only fair, we're just averaging it out. Everyone's going to have the same. But the people that really take the hit from this is the students because you spend, you know, $100,000, $70,000, something for a degree, and you come out working and I don't know, I don't know, say a marketing analytics job, you're making forty five to fifty, and now you get this massive student loan on your back, and so it's kind of an unfair advantage I don't think a lot of the programs see. And there are programs that are like honestly out there quoting numbers and putting out prices and perhaps are in bigger cities with bigger salaries, but at the end of the day, trying to wrangle this idea of data and the statistics behind it of how much experience do the graduates have, um, which numbers are actually real, where are the jobs going, for example, what city are they working in? All these things kind of shake out the salary to see more of a realistic picture of what's happening. And then to make it worse, you go on to, I don't know, like these Wall Street Oasis nonsense websites where it's a bunch of like, I don't know, 15, 16 year old kids on there typing on their keyboard talking about, you know, oh, I'm making $10 million and I'm working at this firm. Most of that's garbage and lies, or it's like they know that one friend of theirs that's making that half million dollars, but it really does make the picture even unclear and kind of this fairy tale. And then when you graduate, you're kind of upset because it's not a reality anymore. 